Welcome back everybody, Chad from Patriot Astro here, and I'm back to make a video I've been meaning to make for a while on imaging with a single mount and a dual image train type setup. Uh, I'm gonna add into that PHD2 and synchronized dithering using Nina version 1.10. Synchronized dithering is not yet supported in 1.11, so while there's a lot of good reasons to go to 1.11 like the advanced sequencer, um, if you wanna do synchronized dithering, you're gonna be stuck with 1.10 at least for a little while. So what I'm doing here specifically in my setup is I've got a couple ZWO ASI 183 MC cameras connected to a pair of Astro Mechanics Canon lens focusers. So I can do autofocusing and then an identical pair of 200 millimeter Canon lenses. Your setup could be completely different. Um, you could use two completely different focal lengths. Um, you can do just about anything you wanna do. Um, what we're really talking about here is dual image trains simultaneously targeting the same location. In my case, I'm gonna have the same exact field of view. And what that allows me to do is capture twice as many light frames uh, of the same target with the same field of view in the original amount of time, right? So rather than eight hours on a single image train and getting a certain number of light frames, I'm getting 16 hours worth of light frames, right? Now you don't have to do synchronized dithering. And I think that's important to understand because there's a little complexity when it comes into that. Um, you can actually just straight up image. Uh, what's gonna be required is two instances of Nina. Each instance of Nina will communicate with a single one of the cameras from the image train. You set up your sequences. One instance of Nina will control the mount and will keep us on target all night. Our guide cam will help with that. And the second instance of Nina will talk to the second camera and second focuser. And in that particular case, uh, that one's just snapping pictures, right? Doesn't really care about the mount, doesn't care about anything. It's just gonna keep going through its sequence all night. Now with synchronized dithering, what that allows us to do is if you were to drizzle, certainly dithering helps. Uh, for me, the walking noise and some other noise I get can go away if I'm dithering properly. So um, I wanna make sure I dither. The problem is with, with two image trains is that I need both of them to be aware of the dither because if a dither occurs in the middle of a single image, um, I'm gonna get a lot of movement and I'm gonna lose that frame, right? So what we do with synchronized dithering with Nina, it'll automatically be configured to dither every one frame so that if this is a 60 second image over here on this particular image train, um, it'll hit the end of the 60 seconds, save the image and basically wait for the dither until the second image train is done. Now, if I'm running 60 seconds on each, they get pretty much in sync and then I need to wait for uh, the dither to occur, which is pretty quick. However, sometimes if I'm running just RGB imaging here with maybe a light pollution filter, and on the second image train, maybe I'm running an HA filter, I might need much longer exposures on my HA filter. So maybe I'm doing one minute subs, and then over here I'm doing two minute subs. In that case, after image train one completes its 60 second image, it will wait for the dither and just sit there. Once the 120 second sub on the HA side finishes, it will ask for the dither as well, and both will dither. As soon as the dither completes, the single dither on the single mount, they will both start imaging again. So again, you can lose a little bit of time if you're not doing identical exposures, but I wouldn't worry about that so much. You're still getting extra images throughout the night, and it's still more efficient in the long run. Um, to get this working, you're going to need you know, some sort of an adapter. This is a Vixen style dual saddle adapter. Uh, they make all different types. This one's from ADM, I'll link it in the comments. Um, but the, the trick here is to make sure you have a nice sturdy adapter that is going to be able to get your image trains to be parallel because they need to both be on target and on, cent on the same center. Um, additionally, you wanna make sure they have the same rotation, right? So if I have these cameras rotated um, differently, or I have them not exactly centered the same, you're gonna end up with a challenge where when you try to stack these frames, assuming you're trying to stack both sets of frames together, um, the alignment process certainly will work and the stacking will work, but you'll end up with um, some clipping on the edges, right? And depending on how out of alignment the two trains are, you could end up with a lot more clipping than you'd like. So anyway, let's dive in and see how it all works out and see what the configuration looks like in Nina and you can decide if it's something you wanna do. 
Okay, so here we are remote controlling my Sirius EQG mount. Now before we get started, I want to show you a little trick I figured out. Because I'm using two of the same exact brand and model cameras, it can get pretty confusing in Nina to know which is which. And what I found is if I go into ASCOM Diagnostics in Platform 5, I can select the cameras and assign a name to them or a tag. So in this case, I'm going to go and look uh, and see what ASCOM sees. And I can see here when I hit the drop down that I see an ASI camera one and camera two. And I can select camera one and go into properties. Now I've already named them, but what you would do is just select that camera and click edit. And once we click edit, we can see that we have an ability to put a tag here. So I've put a tag there for that particular camera. It's my one shot color camera OSC. I go to camera two and in this case in the properties I have SHO as part of the tag because this is where my HA filter is. Now this is going to make it a lot easier when I get into Nina and my profiles to make sure that I'm actually connecting to the camera I expected to connect to with that particular instance. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and go into PHD2. I'm using a development build, so I have multi-star guiding. Here are my cameras, and you can see that the tags came through. So I have a one-shot color camera, I have my SHO, which is my HA version, and then I have my guide camera. And I'm actually going to go ahead and connect to both the mount and my guide camera. And I'm just going to drag this aside here. Now I'm going to minimize this at this point and we're gonna go ahead and jump into Nina. Now, when I start this up, I'm gonna be in the first of two profiles I have configured, and this profile happens to be named in such a way that it is um, tagged as an HA profile. And again, you can just rename these. So I've, I've got an HA profile and an RGB profile. Also notice I'm using a dark color scheme for this particular instance. Now in equipment, I am going to make one quick change here because I'm actually not going to shoot at f2.8. I'm actually going to change the aperture to f4 to get some tighter stars. So I'm just going to modify that here. In imaging, do notice that you are going to save from two different profiles and you want to make sure that you have something to denote that so you're not just dropping images for both profiles in the same place with the same name it can get a little confusing so I've put some tags there that you may have noticed. We're going to go ahead and connect to the camera you can see again the ASCOM tags came through so in this one since it's the HA I'm going to connect to my SHO camera. I'll connect to it and I'll start cooling. I don't have a filter wheel, so we can skip that. I do have a focuser, and this is my um, Astro Mechanics Canon lens focuser. I am gonna go click edit first and change this from uh, f2.8 to f4, so that when I do connect here, it will automatically change the aperture to uh, f4. In this particular instance, I'm also gonna connect to my mount. And we'll look at guiding here. Um, as well and from a guiding perspective we are going to um, eventually connect to synchronized PHD2 and again this is only available in Nina 1.10 currently. So I've got my equipment connected and what I'll go ahead and do here is take a test image just a very quick test image here five seconds And this comes up and you'll notice that this particular image um, is, is close to focus. Uh, being that it is my HA, it's a little dim. I'm, I'd need longer exposures to capture a bit more light here. So let's go ahead and get to something brighter so we can test that our field of view on both instances eventually are similar. I'll go and uh, grab an alignment star here and I'm going to use Arcturus. Uh, it's pretty high in the sky. I, I typically look at the altitude there when I'm selecting one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and salute a target. I'll speed this up. So as we slew there, um, the next thing we're going to do is plate solve and make sure we're on target. This is the first thing I'm looking at this evening, so I'm probably off target. 
and I'll speed this up as well. You'll notice at f4 I get these diffraction spikes um, due to my, my Canon lens uh, aperture closing. Um, it's only on the bright stars, take it or leave it. I think it works in some images, um, but it's just something you have to live with if you're going to try to use uh, lenses in some cases. So I'm going to go ahead and loop some five second exposures in this particular profile so I can make sure that as I'm potentially adjusting things, I'm getting updated images from that particular profile and camera. Now you can see I'm launching Nina again. In this case, it's auto selected the second profile because the primary profile was already in use in the other Nina instance. Notice that I have a different color palette here as well so I can differentiate them very easily. Again, in this one, I'll change the focal ratio to uh, f4. And notice that I'm tagging these photos uh, because it's my RGB camera as OSC, CLS, CCD. And um, it'll just make it a little bit easier for me to make sure that as the pictures get dumped in the folders that I know which pictures came from which camera. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect to the camera here and um, cool it. And I'm going to connect to the second Astro Mechanics Focuser, change it to F4. And in this case, I don't connect to the mount. Uh, remember, only the primary instance is going to control my mount, and eventually we'll connect to PHD2 Experimental in the second instance as well. So remember, only one instance drives the mount and needs to connect to the mount. So we'll take an image here on the second imaging train. And remember, we're looping images in the primary train. So I've already done pretty much the centering I wanted. I did cause a little rotation just so you can see what it looks like. Now, if you just mouse over Nina, you'll get the two instances in Windows 10 to pop up. And if I just hover my mouse over either of the images at the bottom, it'll pull the latest image up of that particular application. So you can see just by mousing back and forth over the images, I can test to see uh, whether or not I'm in alignment. And, and I'm in a pretty good alignment. There's a little bit of an alignment issue and some rotation issues. The rotation issues will become clearer in a little bit here as we move forward. So back in the primary instance, I'm going to go connect to Synchronize PhD, and that causes the PhD2 server to start, and it shows one connected client at this point. Then I'm going to go into my second instance, and connect to synchronized PHD2. And you'll notice now it says that there are two connected clients. So we are both subscribed to the PHD2 server and we can communicate about dither operations. I can go back into PHD2 and I'll go ahead and start looping some frames and I'll go ahead, choose a guide star and connect. You'll notice I have multi-star guiding again because I am running a development version of PHD2, so I have that new feature available. Uh, synchronized guiding does work in the current version. You don't need the development version. I am only running the development version for multi-star guiding. And you can see I started to guide here. So I have some guiding coming into PHD2. And if we look at the Nina instances, we'll see the guiding information coming in to both instances as well. So we can see in the second instance, we have guiding data coming in. And if I go to the first instance that's controlling the mount, I had guide data there. So let's just go ahead and pick a target. I'm going to go and search for um, a galaxy, and we'll just use M101. It's just past the meridian, so that'll work perfect for a short demo. And I'll go ahead and slew to that target right now. And we can set it for framing as well. Now I'm going to speed up framing quite a bit, because at this focal length, I'm actually using 4 degrees, which will take a bit to pull back the image. Now we could adjust framing. I'm just going to leave it alone here and we'll go ahead and replace that as the sequence target. Remember, this is my primary instance that is controlling my mount. We can see that the pinwheel galaxy came in and because this is the primary instance, I am going to start guiding here and I'm going to slew to target and center target. And then I can also set autofocus parameters here because I do have a local focuser on this instance. We have all the normal options. They will all work fine. Um, in this particular case, uh, I'm going to do uh, 40 every 45 minutes. I'll actually do an update to focusing. Uh, with these Canon lenses, I often don't need to refocus, but just to show that it works here. Now I'm going to go ahead and set my sequence. I'm going to say in this particular case that I want to take um, 100 
frames um, at 120 seconds. Notice that dithering is set to on and it dithers every one frame. Now that automatically happens. You cannot toggle either of those entries. As soon as you go to synchronized PHD2 and connect to that, dithering will be on and you will dither every single frame. So let's go to the second instance now. Here we don't have a mount. We're not going to slew this particular instance. Only really knows about the camera and the focuser and the synchronized PHG2. So I'll go ahead and start typing in Pinwheel Galaxy. That'll do a quick search in the background and I can select it. Because I didn't modify framing, this will work fine. Otherwise, I might have to type some entries in here. I do not need to start guiding or slew or center. In this instance, there is no mount connected. But I still, in this particular case, would like to refocus every 45 minutes, so I'll go ahead and do that here. And I do need to set what the sequence will look like, and again, what I'll do is the same thing. I'll do 100, 120 second frames. Notice that dithering is on, and it is every one frame. I'll just double check the sequence, and it looks like, oh, I forgot to select to enable to autofocus after elapsed time, so I'll go ahead and click that. So now I'm going to go ahead and kick off an autofocus. I'm going to do that before the sequence so that they can both be in focus before I start. You don't have to do this, but I have seen cases where the startup sequence may time out if one of your instances takes too long. So if autofocus were to fail in one of the instances and it couldn't start up or you ran into a problem because one of the instances was taking too long, um, you may end up failing and not starting your sequence. So I prefer to get a lot of stuff out of the way, such as autofocus and even the plate solving up front. So I'm gonna speed this up pretty dramatically as you can see. And what we're doing is autofocusing both at the same time. It doesn't matter, both are independent uh, cameras and focusers. So they are focusing at the same time. They've both completed their autofocus. Now in my primary instance, I can go in and see that uh, after the autofocus completed, it automatically started guiding. And I can see that's being pulled in. And if I go to the secondary sequence, again, after the autofocus guiding started there as well. Now remember, my primary sequence here has the mount. So this is where I'm going to plate solve, right? This is the one that can control the mount. So I kick through this very, very quickly. I actually edited out the time, but we can see it plate solved and centered M101, even though it is pretty dim in this particular case, being an HA filter. I do not need to plate solve here because this camera just went along for the ride. So I can just take a quick 30 second image. And again, I'll speed this up dramatically just to show that we're on target. So now that I've plate solved, I'm basically aligned and centered. I have guiding functioning on both. So now we can just toggle between the two. Again, mousing over each instance as it pops up at the bottom of Windows 10. Here you can see a little more clearly the alignment is slightly out and certainly the field rotation is there. So I would actually, if I wanted to clean this up perfectly, I could go in and, and realign the cameras. Um, but it's okay, it'll actually uh, align in post-processing and, and I won't lose too much of the border. I'm going to quickly double check the sequence uh, here in the second instance and now I'll go to the first. Um, in the first, I actually don't need to slew to target and center anymore. I just did that manually. There's no reason to do it a second time, so I'll disable that. I'm going to go ahead and kick it off in the primary instance and then I'm going to kick it off in the secondary. Notice I get a warning in the secondary because there's no telescope uh, mount attached and it does warn me about that, although it's not needed. Uh, we can see that the second one is already imaging and now the first one is finally imaging. The first one lagged because it was in charge of starting the guider and we needed that communication to complete. So at this point, if you look at what we have here, we have a second instance that is uh, taking images right now. It's actually in the middle of its first frame, about 25 seconds in. We have guiding running. If I mouse over and look at the first instance, we're only now about 25 seconds in, and we have guiding running there as well. So our first instance is actually behind in our exposure timing from our second instance. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and we will um, see what happens as we get closer to the exposure ending. So 
So we're getting pretty close to the exposure ending, uh, our first two minute sub. And as the second instance finishes, we are going to debayer and stretch, and it's going to wait for a dither. So we're waiting for the dither now, and if I go over to the primary instance, we'll see that one just completed, and we're waiting for the dither there as well. So since both instances have told PHD2 to dither, now PHD2 dithers, the dither will occur, and in a second here when the dither is done, we'll see they'll both start imaging again, and here you go. So we actually have our instance starting to re-image the second image. We can see that we do have a dither on the guide graph on both instances. And even if we look at PHD2, you'll notice that we see the dither there as well. So the dither occurred without a problem, and then the dither was communicated back to both instances of Nina so they could start their second image. So you can see they're both running a second image. I'm going to speed that second image up here. And at the end of the second image, they're pretty much both in lockstep at this point. So they should both finish about the same time since they both have equal exposure lengths. And again, they will both ask for a dither. The dither will complete. And after the dither completes, another image will kick off. And there we go. So we can see the dither here as expected in both instances because they are synchronized. And certainly PHD2 reflects this as well, so it'll end up in any log files you may want to look at later from that perspective. So one other thing to remember is that you don't need to dither, right? Um, you can actually image with both image trains with two instances of Nina without dithering if you don't require dithering. And in that case, I can just pause both of my sequences and speed it up. When you pause 110 of Nina, you have to get through that last um, exposure. So they're both going to go ahead and complete that last exposure. And I can just go and disconnect from synchronized PHD2 and just move it over back to regular PHD2. And I really only need that to occur in the primary, right? I don't need that in the secondary. So I'll just off camera disconnect synchronized PHD2 from the second instance. The instance without the mount doesn't need to know about PHD in this particular case since there's no dither communication. Notice dithering is off and I can go ahead and start the instances and they will just image. So you have the option to just image two cameras with two instances of Nina, allowing one instance to control the mount and PHD2 and guiding, or you can synchronize dither and have both instances subscribed so that they know when a dither needs to occur and has completed. Welcome back everybody. Hopefully that helped you understand the process of running two image trains with Nina um, on the same computer at the same time. And also hopefully you have a little bit more understanding of synchronized dithering and the configuration and setup process there as well. Um, I will say something I live by when it comes to astronomy is just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, just because you know how to do this, you may not want to. There are a lot of challenges. You probably already have enough challenges with your typical daily astrophotography planning and, and setup and imaging sessions. Introducing this is just another level of complexity. So if you have another camera sitting around that you want to put to use, um, if this is something that interests you because you're trying to make the most out of the very few clear skies that you get, um, it may be perfect, right? Otherwise, it may just introduce additional challenges that you may not be all that interested in dealing with. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, please subscribe and like this content so we can get it in front of additional people that may find this topic useful as well. If you have additional questions or uh, topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to drop me a line. You can go to my website at www.patriotastro.com or get me on Instagram at, at patriot underscore astro or certainly just leave the message in the comments. I'll get through those as soon as I can as well. Again, hopefully this helps. Clear skies.